haven't seen anything like it. Zombies, mommy. It tastes good. You wouldn't take it. I'm really touched. It's a beautiful country, this. Hello, welcome back to our channel, or if you're new here, I'm Steph, and along with my husband Pete and our three-year-old son Hayes, we've been traveling the world for over one year, and now we're in India. Last time you saw us, we were in the middle of Ahmedabad's old city in that 150-year-old haveli. Today, we're in rural Gujarat, staying nearby this mango orchard. Mommy, you want to make a train travel with this? We are going to wait to show you the incredible Devpur homestay. Because the main reason we came to Kutch is because we wanted to see the Great Run! It's so cheesy. So let's backtrack a bit and we'll show you how we got here. We're not stopping here because we're going to a few other places, but that's ooh, pretty cool Hanuman on the side of the road. I've always said Hanuman is my favorite god because I love monkeys. That's cool. Okay, let's keep going. Modi gave our boy Obama a gift from this Rogan art establishment. We're going to go and check it out. This art called known as a Rogan art, and uh, this one is a Rogan. This is insane. The skill required to do this is just <laughs> unbelievable. Because the texture of the of the oil, the paint, I mean it just looks really thick. But how he gets it in such a thin, consistent line, and then he's just using his finger underneath the cloth as like a guide, I guess. I mean this is incredible. Rogan art is 400 years old, yeah. brought from Persia. Yeah. And Abdul Hamid here is just showing us how it's done with the castor oil. And it's incredible. I didn't film it when I first got in here. I asked, like, is it embroidery? Because from afar, it looks like embroidery, but it's this really thick oil paint. How long did that take to make? It's uh, near 20, 25 days. Thank you. Welcome, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. That was really cool. So it's the only family that does this. Don't know. This village also evidently has a copper bell maker. That's where we're headed now. There was no way I was leaving this place empty handed. <laughs> not uh, heavy in. Uh, not heavy breathing. Yeah. Uh, Relax. The normally. And get the five chunks, John. Like the faintest, like the tiniest little sound. You have to get really close to the mic. <laughs> desert now. It's very sandy and very uh, desolate you could say and uh, we're now on a very bumpy road that is under construction. We're near Hodka where we're going to be spending the night in a tent and going to the Ran later for sunset. Can't wait. I mean I'm like in my head not trying to hype it up too much because I've never really been to like a salt flat before. But I think it's gonna be pretty cool. We made it to Hodka just in time for Tali lunch. Very good actually. A little bit spicy as well, which I'm here for. I like it. So, 
we're now at like the entry gate into the ram great mm -hmm. ram and um a lot of people are stopped because they're having to do their paperwork you have to have like a um, you have to have a permit to go in our excellent driver here got our paperwork far outside which saved us a lot of time to get in and uh now we're just cruising through past everyone else that's having to do this is that right we may have spoke too soon we didn't bring up our friends. and they want to see them again i don't know why seeing like a lot of nodding from pete looks like perhaps we don't have to go get the passports he's coming back looks like some big thank yous did he talk his way through All right, <laughs> so I was all cocky, you know, about our paperwork that we had done before. Turns out you actually need to bring your passport. Specifically, they need to see your Indian visa in your passport. So, again, our savior, Naranji. this man, Naranji. Naranji. Naranji to the rescue. He was able to do a lot of smooth talking, exchanging of some phone numbers. We're going to send them a text with a picture of our visa and our passport. Go. Woo -hoo -hoo. I... Wow. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's, it's very crowded. Cool driving. I don't know why I thought it wouldn't be. Maybe because like on the way here, we barely saw a soul. But it's like a full-blown party happening here. There's paragliding. I'm pretty sure we're going to see some camel cars. Tour buses galore. Slap me in in Bombay. Which we will be soon, so if you enjoy us and our travels, make sure you subscribe because we've got some great videos coming up in Mumbai. Which way should we go? Should we just go straight up here and then go out that way? Should I taste it? Oh yeah! Do people do that? Do people taste it? Like how could you not be curious? It's just like a bunch of salt, right? Okay. There's salt everywhere. <laughs> how do I find the cleanest bit? This dig. Okay. It's wet. This is not a good idea. I don't need this bit here. Oh, oh that's a good one. <laughs> don't need mommy. <gasps> How is it? It's salty. Is it? It tastes good. Right, do gonna... people do this? Is there a reason why people don't do this? I'm gonna try a little bit. Oh, it's very fishy, isn't it? No. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, the fish from uh, the fish from the sea. Yeah. It's not fishy. Why? Why are they not harvesting more of this? It's really good salt. Yeah, it tastes delicious. I would put that on chips any day. We're um, not really sure what you do once you get out here. We've taken some photos. We've tasted it. It's beautiful. I think you're supposed to do some of those like illusion photos, but I don't really have anything or know how. Or do what the Indians do best. So we'll have to go to Bolivia. Mm, time pass. Look at this. It's like, I've never seen anything like it. All right, this video is turning into the uh, top five things you're supposed to do on the uh, Great Ram. Number five is a little bit of Solbe action. Number four thing to do out on the Great Ram is just like run off into the distance. It's really muddy up. Maybe that's why people don't eat it. That'd be dirty if you eat that. I don't know if I've told you this recently, but...
Sun is starting to set. It's very beautiful. Still just hanging out. This is the closest I'm gonna get to being on the moon. So I'm just sort that. of like, well. Yeah. No, I won't let you go to the moon. Um, so I'm just soaking that in for a moment. I like gravity though. Little PSA, sleep, really important. Hayes didn't nap today. Don't plan a big adventure when your child hasn't napped. We made it back just before total darkness. We're feeling we're gonna be stuck in quite a bit of traffic. It's a Friday, by the way. I don't know if it's always this busy. You cut the guy, mommy. You cut the guy. Get like blue and purple with with orange. Very nice. Very good. Very salty. Salty. It's chilly in this neck of the woods. Thank you. And bon appetit. Good morning. How are you doing, Pete? Oh, so cold. So cold. We are such wimps. It's December 24th. Merry Christmas Eve. And it's cold out here, isn't it? Okay, we've we've warmed up and we're making our way to Bouge. But before we get there, we will show you more of Deborah Homestay. But first, we were recommended on the way to stop at this place called Kala Raksha, which is an NGO that preserves traditional arts. So, just waiting on them to open. While we wait, something that's been a little bit interesting here is every time we have trash, we're like awkwardly holding it, and then a local, for example, our driver right now just says, throw it, throw it. Uh, and then we're like, no, no, we'll carry it till we find a bin, and they just really don't understand. And then we try to explain like, we don't want to do that, but we especially don't want to do it in front of Hayes. We were trying to teach that you don't throw trash on the ground. And it's just funny every time they're like, well, give it to me and I'll throw it. And we're like, no, we don't want him to see that because we don't want him to pick up that you can throw trash on the ground. So I don't know. So Kalaraksha is an NGO dedicated to preserving ancient kind of art forms so that they don't get lost throughout history. So they've got different houses around here that I think artisans come to. I think we're a little bit early to demonstrate. Um, there's a shop, obviously, and then there's this resource center, which is just full of archived, really old art forms so that people can access it if they're studying this. There's also, I think, an online museum where you can go if you're studying it and see all the different types of incredible art in this area. It's just overwhelming how many different types there are. If you come into the Great Ran, this is like on the way from Buj. So it's like just off the, the main sort of highway. So definitely come check it out. It's really cool. Okay, one more little story time before we show you Devpur homestay and end up in Buj. But on the way here, which was like four days ago, I left my wallet on the train. I don't know how or if I dropped it on the platform or what, but we carry like business cards in our wallet. And so, I reached Devport and I had emails and Instagram messages from this guy, I think his name's Chirag, who had all of my documents in my wallet and had taken pictures all of, them, of all of them. And so I asked, you know, would you hang on to it for a few days? And when we come back to Bouge, we will collect it. And so that is what we are going to do. And I just want to share that because I feel like that's not the kind of story that you hear about in India. Chirag? Mm. Yes. You? It's okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Ah, thank you. Where was it? On the train? On the train? Yeah. No, 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 no,
भगवान की मेहरबानी हमारा बात लेकिन जो दिया जाए मुकेश आगे उसे चांस दे He wouldn't take it. Did you find out how he wouldn't no. take the money? He like absolutely wouldn't take it. Did you find out how they got the wallet? Not really. Oh please, can you ask? It's a train, I think, on the train. That's amazing. I mean, it's unbelievable. He wouldn't take it. I'm really, I'm really touched. I am teary-eyed. Oh, I'm that's... gonna, I'm gonna go say thank you. I'm gonna go say thank you. Okay. Do you want to try the money again? I mean. He's had my wallet for four days. And the first thing he did was take photos of every single card in it. And I didn't know why. And then I was like, oh, maybe it's because if I got there and one was missing, he couldn't say, oh, it wasn't there. Because he had sent me photos of every single card. Unbelievable. No, still won't take. They're just happy to help out. Well, that's just, it's just amazing. I mean, I, yeah, still can't get over it. It's a beautiful country, this. I feel like there's so much negative news that comes out of India, and there's so much positive that happens here. And I feel like if you were to pull a lot of people on where they would like to lose a wallet, I don't know, where, I don't know what, I, there's like those videos, right? Where like you leave a wallet around and they like measure it. Anyway, I'm rambling, but I'm just really touched and I wanted to share that. But we are in Bhuj now, which is gonna be a separate vlog. So before the next video, we do want to just take you back to Devpur, show you around at the incredible homestay. This is Devpur Farmstay on a real life mango orchard. And this is Devpur Homestay, which is a gorgeous family home built in 1905 and it's got five rooms for guests. How beautiful is this one? What's your favorite part about this place? What are they? <laughs> Probably the coolest thing about this homestay is that on the property, so literally right here is a school and our room is like right over there. So you couldn't ask for a better spot for Hayes to hang out for a little while because there are kids everywhere and they're so friendly and they all speak awesome English and the other night, a few of them invited us up onto the rooftop to fly kites and they taught Hayes like schoolyard games. It's just extremely lovely. And when he's not running around in the sand playing with all these kids, we just walk down to the mango orchard and there's, I, I don't know, hundreds, thousands of mango trees to just run in. I think we might have to come back in June when they're actually ripe and ready to eat. Apparently, they're some of the sweetest mangoes in India. They even ship them to the UK. I think we've said before on this channel that on this trip we're trying to like stagger visits to cities with relaxing places where Hayes can run around with us constantly needing to hold his hand or telling him to be careful. And this place could not be better for that. Currently Hayes is learning how to play cricket. Okay, update, I was literally just gonna say that the only thing that could make Pete like India more was if they liked football instead of cricket. And one of the kids just said, you play football, and it's off to get a football, so. Back, back, back. This way, Hazy, this way. Hazy. Yes, boys. Alright, wait on this. Yes. Yes. That's the Kutch folk dance. Everybody learns it? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, and this is Freestyle. Egg number. Of all the reasons to come to this homestay, I think the biggest one has been our incredible hosts, Krutarth and Nitu. You've been amazing. We just want to say a huge, huge thank you. And for these incredible meals that we've been having. <laughs> so good. It's been amazing. Breakfast and food. Breakfast, lunch, <laughs> and dinner. It's our last day here at Devport Homestay. I'm packing up and I'm sad. It has been such a lovely stay. I hope that came across how special this place is. All thanks to Kutarth and Nitu who 
are just unbelievable hosts. Basically unrivaled hospitality. So I hope that if you find yourself in Gujarat and specifically Kutch, that you will consider coming up here for a stay because you will not regret it. Anyway, that was our journey to Kutch and to the Great Ron. I hope you enjoyed it. Gujarat has been amazing. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to stay tuned to see where we travel to next. And we'll see you in the next place.